Hey guys, welcome back. So listen, Carlos King had a lot to say on the Reasonably Shady podcast. We talked about um, their little stint. Maybe yesterday, I think we did. But uh, honey, they had a lot to say about a lot of housewives in the press. And we got to go ahead and get into some things. Now, I'm going to try to splice some clips in together um, so we don't have to go to clip and then commentate and then clip and commentate. So we can just do the clips and then commentate all in one piece. But he talked about how boring Dorito is from Beverly Hills. He talked about how Nene imitated his gay black man mannerisms. Listen, his words, not mine, but I agree. Um, He talked about how boring the Real Housewives of Dubai, I mean, bye bye is a mess. We're going to get into Elisa and Ayan's uh, response. And then um, he kept trying to bring up Miss Monique Samuels, knowing that he is on Giselle's podcast, knowing that Giselle do not mess with that woman because Monique is the one with the binder who exposed the relationship or lack thereof between Mr. Bryant and Miss Last Lady. Right. Um, so it's quite interesting. Uh, go ahead and check out these clips. Dorit is so boring. She <laughs> has nothing going on. Twitter ruined Dorit. Nene will have her friends over and she was like, Carlos, come here. Do that thing you did when you used to swipe your bangs away. So then she started taking my mannerisms and she will apply it on camera. Let's talk about the Real Housewives of Dubai, which I like to say the Real Housewives of Dubai, because I don't think they're being themselves. The only thing that stands out to me is, is, the, is the model girl. Currently, she's exactly where she should be. <laughs> which is with you now you guys carlos i don't know what the hell he was on but hunty he was slinging i mean that whole podcast was a mud slinging contest i mean shade a shade fest shading the girls all over the place he started off shading the hell out of beverly hill star miss dorito dorit kimsley um and i think he was trying to say how social media has really kind of ruined the housewives of experience because now some of the housewives are all over Twitter. They're seeing what the fans are saying and they're trying to be what they think the fans want to see instead of being their authentic selves. And someone who has fallen victim to this is Dorito. Okay. He says, nobody wants to watch Dorito get dressed in her rented Louis Vuitton. He said that Dorit's clothes are rented. Okay. He said, don't nobody want to watch you get dressed in that damn closet, sis. Right. Um, you know, we want the old Dorit back. And my whole thing is, I don't know how Dorit used to act because honestly, I think I fell off of her housewives of Beverly Hills, like back in season two or three. I think after season two, I kind of stopped watching for a really, really long time. And then I think like when Denise got on there, I picked it right back up. So, um, yeah, I'm not really familiar with Carlton and Joyce and Lisa Reno when she first got on and Eileen when she first got on um, and all. Of Actually, I picked back up during Puppy Gate when Lisa Vanderpump left. That's when I started watching again. He said, we want old Dorito back now. I don't know how great Dorito was, but apparently Dorito was not very liked in her first two seasons. And I feel like. You know, Carlos is suggesting that she's trying to be what the fans want, but it's not really working out for her. Listen, is Dorito the most interesting thing on the block? Absolutely not. Um, but I don't dislike her this season. Like, she hasn't pissed me off. She hasn't um, really done much. So maybe that's why I don't really have a feeling negative or positive. Um, but yeah. I mean, maybe she calmed down a, 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 a lot because... Um, she yelled at Garcelle and she knew Garcelle was not taking it this season. So, so she, listen, Dorit was like, let me calm my happy ass down. Okay. And then the woman just got robbed. And so she going through her mental and going through the therapy and the whole thing. Anyways, then he started talking about NeNe Leaks, um, saying that when him and NeNe first started their relationship, their working relationship, where he was her producer in the first couple of seasons of Atlanta and then became the EP, him and NeNe would talk and hang out. And um, Nini started picking up on his mannerisms. Nini started picking up on his sayings and his doings. And um, she started, you know, emulating that on the housewives, which I thought was really interesting because a couple of months ago, I came onto the platform and I basically said that I feel as though um, Nini acts like a gay man trapped in a woman's body. And I got some comments talking about Aaron. What in the hell are you talking about? 
What are you talking about? And I'm like, listen, how many cis straight women are just walking around talking about some? I'm about to hang out with my good Judy's. Yes. Like that is so extra. It is just so it's reminiscent of like ball culture, drag queen culture, gay man lingo slang. And listen, I don't want to really delve into the conversation about women's relations with the gay community. But I did say that her personality as the seasons evolved, as, as they went on and on and on, was reminiscent of a gay man. Um, and I think my opinion is confirmed by the fact that Carlos King himself said that Nene literally took his mannerisms or imitated them. All right. Um, Dubai. This is where things got really shady because they started talking about the Real Housewives of Dubai. Carlos King called them the Real Housewives of Bye Bye by basically saying that they are boring. And they all said that the only real standout is Ayan. I think Giselle said that. And then Carlos King said something to the effect of he believes that the women aren't really being themselves and this, that, and the third. You guys, Ayan and Lisa Milan clapped the hell back. Okay, they clapped back. Um... I think Ayan said, I don't agree with that as much as I respect Giselle, but Lisa and me literally carry the show. I do agree with that. So she needs to watch more than one episode to see what's going on. It's an ensemble cast. You can't judge when you've only watched one and a half episodes. Lisa Milan clapped back and said, I feel like Giselle should actually know better. And girl, worry about your fashions first before you worry about us. Y'all, Lisa Milan is not playing with that ass, okay? And I was wondering, are they going to keep this same energy with um, Giselle and Carlos King and Robin as they do with uh, Lisa Rinna? I was like, are they going to keep that same energy? And they did. The only person that was not in attendance was Caroline Brooks. Caroline, you, 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 you do the most. You do the absolute most. I think she called somebody a bitch the other day, and it was just so random, and it was like, She's very reactive, and I think it's fun to be reactive, but I think when she reacts, she overreacts, and it just, you look weird. You look crazy, and you look weird. Like, this is not loving hip-hop. This is, like, calm down. Like, it's kind of like when Tamara and Jill were going at it, and Jill was like, oh, it's confirmed. Tamara's coming back, right? And, um, you know, then Tamara came back like, oh, Jill, you're a thirsty bitch. And it's just kind of like, girl, like, I feel like that was just not that response was so over the top for what Jill did. Like, it just didn't match. It, it didn't match. And then it's going to be people online. Well, you can't control how people respond. Yeah, you can't. But, you know, I can't come out and say that you look dumb. You look stupid. And I feel like a lot of these in a lot of these instances, Caroline Brooks be looking dumb. It's just my opinion. Um, she does the most. It's like, girl, calm down. Like when she on the show, when she went after Nina, she went after Nina because Nina told Sarah Aldamani or she went after Nina. Yeah. Nina told Sarah that Caroline Brooks had an issue with her. And then Caroline Brooks really started going in on Nina when Nina's uh, father is in the hospital dealing with COVID-19. And we may not, you know, he may be taking his last breaths and you sitting up here talking about this dumb shit like Carolina's weird. They clapped back or whatever. What I thought was really ironic. Okay, it's coming back to me. What I thought was really ironic was the fact that they had a lot to say about um, Dubai in its first season. But if we can remember, like, number one, the first season of reality TV show, it's either going to start off with a bang or it's going to be a slow burner. And I feel like Love and Marriage was definitely a slow burner. I feel like uh, The Red Housewives of Potomac was definitely a slow burner. If we really want to fixate on Potomac in particular, that whole I'm a light-skinned black woman and I'm mixed and I'm white and I'm biracial. As a black person, I feel uncomfortable watching this. And then the whole etiquette thing and it was just so stupid. It was so stupid. So it's just ironic that a lot of folks are very overly critical about the first season of Dubai when a lot of their first seasons of their shows were just like. And you needed somebody like Monique to wake up. You needed someone like Monique to give y'all a wake up call. Wake up. Cool, cool, wake up. Um, so then they started talking about Monique. Speaking of Monique, right? Because Carlos King was being super messy knowing 
that Giselle do not mess with that girl. Carlos King kept trying to bring up Monique Samuels and he just finally broke the ice and was like, do you think Monique was great for the show? Both Robin and Giselle said, yes, Monique was great for the show. However, Giselle went on to say that Monique is exactly where she needs to be. And that's with you, Carlos King on own. And I thought that was so shady. That was, and listen, Carlos couldn't even compete with that shade. I mean, it was shady because if we compare Bravo and the Real Housewives franchise with On and the Love and Marriage, I mean, come on, come on. That was shady. Oh, no, no, no. It wasn't reasonable, but it was shady. Mm -hmm. Y'all gonna let me know how y'all feel about that. That was pretty much it. I think that was it. So let me know. How y'all thoughts about this podcast? It was super shady. And do you agree with what Giselle and Carlos and them had going on? Let's talk about it in the comments below. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to create a great day.